here's a pretty rough story to start out the day. And this comes from Caitlin Johnstone, who I am a fan of. Julian Assange is reportedly gravely ill, and hardly anyone's talking about it. This, of course, comes on the news. You guys have likely already heard that he was allegedly hospitalized. So here's an update. Julian Assange's Swedish lawyer, Pearl Samuelson, has told the press that Assange's health condition on Friday was such that it was not possible to conduct a normal conversation with him. This jarring revelation has been reported by a small handful of outlets, but only as an aside in relation to Sweden refusing Samuelson's request for a postponement of a scheduled hearing regarding Assange's detention. All right. As of this writing, this is Caitlin Johnstone speaking, I've been able to find very few news outlets reporting on this at all. The most mainstream being a Reuters article with the very tame headline, Swedish court rejects delay of Assange hearing over ill health. The Sydney Morning Herald also covered the story without even mentioning illness in the headline. So here's the uh, here's uh, an update on the hospitalization part. Another part of the story, this is from the article, which has gone completely uncovered in all English language media as of this writing, is the news that Assange has actually been transferred to the hospital wing of Belmarsh Prison. This was reported by the Swedish outlet Uppsala Nyaya Tidning. Uh, I'm sure I mispronounced that. A newspaper published in the same district court Assange is scheduled to call in to for his hearing. So here's, here's from that article. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, a Swedish lawyer, wants the arrest hearing on Monday in Uppsala to be postponed. According to the lawyer, who has now visited his client in British prison, Assange is admitted to the medical department and was unable to make a call. Last Friday, Assange's Swedish defender, lawyer per, per E. Samuelson, visited his client in prison. In a letter to Uppsala District Court, the lawyer says that they met for just under two hours. According to the lawyer, Assange's state of health at the meeting was such that a normal conversation with him was not possible. Assange is said to have been taken to the prison's ward. I'm assuming they mean hospital. But there is no more detailed information about his state of health. Uh, so here's Caitlin Johnstone speaking again. I've emailed Per Samuelson with a request to confirm the news that Assange has been hospitalized. I'll update this article if I hear back. Uh, from Caitlin Moore. For Assange's supporters, one of the many frustrating things about his imprisonment has been the way he's been cut off from the usual means which used to be used to inform the public about his well-being. It used to be that news reports could be easily confirmed or refuted by people who had consistent access to Assange in some way by sources like the WikiLeaks Twitter account. But the people who operate that account don't have ready access to him anymore. Now we're seeing all sorts of rumors circulating about how Assange is faring in prison, and it gets difficult to sort out fact from fiction. It appears that it would be difficult to find a more reliable source on the state of his own health than his own lawyer, however. So... This is, again, kind of more of the same. They cut off Assange from information. They cut off his ability to deliver information. So everything we get in regards to him, we're just getting secondhand, um, and we're waiting. You know, we're waiting to hear from things, and barely any media is reporting on this. Hardly any media is reporting on Julian Assange. It's been that way for a while. Even when he was was taken from the embassy in London, only a few media outlets actually stuck around to see him be taken away. Our RT was one of them. There were a handful of others. Most just kind of bounced. If it wasn't for some of that footage, uh, the the what little footage people got, we would have had no source of information on that. None whatsoever. So... That's continuing to happen now. Allegedly, he's been hospitalized. Um, we've only heard so much. We've just heard something indirect from his own lawyer that pretty much one outlet is talking about. All other outlets are just sort of either glossing over it or ignoring it entirely. So, once again, we don't know what's going on with him. And this entire case is a complete assault on press freedom and you have to ask yourself why are they keeping us in the dark well we know why we know why because if people really knew what was going on um there would be a lot more outrage and 
slowly but surely, folks are starting to come around to the fact that this is not okay what's happening. This is a true assault on press freedom. This is uh, a gross overreach and abuse of power by the United States. And that's putting it gently. That's putting it gently. I mean, there's a lot of... uh, there's a lot of other words that come to mind. And, and you know, when I say, <laughs> when, I, when I, I've done a couple of visuals for Julian Assange, they have those online visuals uh, to try to increase the awareness on this, to try to, um, you know, to try to have some, some better action on a part of uh, governments. And, you know, it's hard to put into words watching this happen in real time. Watch what's happening to Julian Assange in real time. Watch what's happening to Chelsea Manning in real time. And know what's going on. Know that this is an assault to whistleblowers. This is an assault to press freedom. This is a message from the powerful saying, hey, are you thinking of exposing some war crimes? Are you thinking of exposing some injustice? Are you thinking of exposing um, cheating in our election process? Well, guess what? I wouldn't if I were you. That's what this is. And we've seen this theme time and time again, where we're being kept in the dark, where we're trying to seek information. And if it wasn't for the blogosphere, if it wasn't for activists, if it wasn't for people trying to get as close as they can on the ground, we would have access to even less information than we have now. So to call this a complete failure on every level by the corporate media is an understatement. It's been a gross failure. And you know what? Maybe I shouldn't call it a failure because it's by design. It's not that they're not aware of Julian Assange. They're not reporting on it on purpose. And when they do report on it, it's um, heavily sugar-coated or uh, heavily cherry-picked. And they're, they're very deliberate in their messaging. So, once again, to quote Tom Petty, the waiting is the hardest part. And once again, here we have another update on Julian Assange where we're kind of in the dark on a lot of things and we're waiting for a lot more to unfold. Typical theme. Uh, and as of the recording of this, that's where we're at. Allegedly, he's been hospitalized. We're waiting to find out more. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it. 